Coming up, a pivotal weekend in team bowling as the three-time Elias Cup champion Portland Lumberjacks seek the top spot in the PBA Elite League standings. While two former Elias Cup champs, the Waco Wonders and the Dallas Strikers battle to stay alive for a trip to the playoffs in Portland, Maine. The PBA Elite League is next on FS1. is in the Thunderdome just outside the Big D in Allen Park, Michigan for a doubleheader of PBA Elite League action. And we take a look at the table for the PBA Elite League and you're going to notice that line of demarcation. We're going to see Vegas and Portland later, but we're focusing on the two teams who don't want to be below that line, taking each other on right now, Dallas versus Waco. And hello again, everybody, with the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont, and thank you so much for being here. Randy's fan club going at it in the background. Well, Randy, below that yellow line is a dark place to be, and the message is very simple for these two teams. Yeah, it's do or die for both of these teams, and we'll start with the Waco Wonders. What the hell is going on down there in Waco? The defending champions are only returning one player from last year's championship squad, and that's player manager Parker Bone the third. And when we spoke with Parker earlier today, he said, guys, we just can't get out of our own way. Well, they better today or they're going to be packing their bags and there's, they can forget about the trip to Portland. Dallas, on the other hand, is actually rolling it fairly well. They're just not rolling into much luck. Yeah, they really are. I mean, they're third in average throughout the competition this season, but they can't win a match. And when you talk to Hall of Fame manager Norm Duke, he's like, guys, it's simple. We're just choking. Yeah. Will he do something about it today? Will Norm lace him up? Norm and Parker standing by with Kimberly right now. Well, Parker, in non-televised events, your team is 0-9, but thank goodness you're on TV today because you are 2-0 and in that regard. So i got to ask you, what is it about being under the bright lights that uh, gives you that extra edge? I think Waco loves it under the lights. The fans in the back, we're on the lanes, we're ready to roll, and we're going to use all these lights to propel us forward, not only today, but for matches to come. And what's going to be key for you guys to take a win today? We just need to put it all together. We're kind of fragmented along uh, too many matches, so now we got to get on board and just put everything together and steamroll it. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. And Norm, you know, we've talked over the season, and you said you essentially have been giving your manager role over to Tommy mm. and to Bill. So i got to ask, is that working out the way that you'd expect it to be? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Did he just say steamroll us? Is that what he said? God, dog. Whew. No, no, I'm going to manage the last three weeks because I'm going to be out. Uh, but they've done a really good job. The thing is, uh, you got to close the door when you have that door to close. They have done really well, actually, because they are third in the league. So i got to ask. You know, when, when averages, yeah. they're third and leaving averages. So I got to ask you, what's going to be key for you guys to take the win over Waco? Well, our average has to be higher than theirs. That's the only thing. Hey, look, <laughs> you can take average and toss it. You know, this is win-loss, and uh, right now we're struggling, uh, both teams. So this is win or go home for both of us. It's do or die for both of you. Good luck to you guys today. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kimberly. Norm and Parker and we're going to see Parker in action as Waco will start things off. He's in the number five position. He's dialing his own number. He'll be led off by Beef Stew, then Mitch Yupe, DJ Archer and Zach Wilkins. Tom Hess will sit this one out, but Tom is always ready. All right, make a good guess. <laughs> and you know, Randy, interesting that Stu made that remark because you have been amused watching practice. Yeah, and you're right, Dave. I, the players in warm-ups, they were playing everywhere. I mean, I didn't see one discernible track to the pocket. I mean, you could go straight up the lane. You could cross boards. You could do just about everything, and nothing looked good. Take a look at the lineup. Will this look good? Jake Peters, who's celebrating a birthday today. Frank Snodgrass, Butters in the number three position. And Norm Duke not bowling, unfortunately. Tommy Jones, number four, and... The anchor man of the candy man. Oh. Quiet ten there for Jake. Right An incredible crowd here at Strobel Arena, by the way. Uh, this very unique venue is just about at capacity. In fact, really, it is at capacity. Yeah, this is quite the uh, the bowling arena, is it? 
is it not? And, you know, after the passing of Tom Strobel, after the Masters last year, the PBA Sorry. named it <laughs> the Strobel Arena. Happy birthday. And I think uh, somebody wished him a happy birthday right in the middle of about him ready to shoot. He's, this is a race to two points. Winner of game one, you get a point. Winner of game two, you get a point. You get to two points, you win. If you don't, after two games, Did you see that? then the teams will select three players to roll one shot each in the shootout. And the highest aggregate score, max of 30, will win. If you're still tied, then we'll just keep throwing, trying to throw strikes until we have a winner. Chupe rolled that beautifully. Great right. shot. Great Look at shot. that. So Number right there. Yeah. Ball speed at almost 20 miles an hour. But you're right, man. This was beautiful. Right up second arrow. You absolutely nutted. Yupe picked up a title last year with his dear friend Packy Hanrahan winning the Roth Holman doubles in Delaware a year ago. Oh, they ran him over there. Grass, and there's the second time right Dallas has put a 10-pin right on now. the board rather than in the pit. Back-to-back -back flat 10s. Frank out of center line, Michigan, looking for his first PBA Tour title. He's at his home center, five-star lanes in Sterling Heights. Actually, was on Waco last year. Yep. No sweat there. Yeah, so no Frank Snodgrass on Waco, no Simonelli on Waco. Well, he was released. Simon yeah. Parker released Simonelli. Uh, Ryan was struggling this season, and and Parker cut his dear friend. Parker's the last guy standing on that championship squad from 2023. But plenty of team experience. We've seen DJ Archer plenty of times in PPA Elite League play over the years. And a signature loft that time. Got a bit of a break. Yeah, nice break. Just leaving the three pin going high. Hey, Jordan. Here's that sorry. signature loft you mentioned. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thanks, Tom. Sorry. Come on, Deej, run down. That's actually less loft than he was using last week. <laughs> well, desert air. He was, he was all, yeah, desert air thinner. It was actually to the arrows. <laughs> all right, that's easily handled. Here we go with the early lead. He only wants right, to strike so far. We'll take a look at a man who throws lots of strikes when he gets going, Jacob Buttruff. Come on, Jake. And it's been an oddly quiet year for the lefty. Yeah, it's been a struggle, a struggle for him this season. No hair gel. What's going on? He looks different. And that did not have much speed on it. Fair up, huh? Typically, we see Jacob using a purple hammer, mm -hmm. and you know, there's been some. Some um, restrictions with some of the urethane bowling balls, the purple hammer. I know that the um, uh, pitch black from Storm. And so, you know, both Brunswick and, and Storm had to make some adjustments with their urethane, and I'm wondering how much that's affected Jacob Buttram. No, he barely made that spare. But both teams are clean. Zach Wilkins is here now. For Waco. In the number four position. Also looking for his first tour title, but you feel like some of these guys, it is just, it's going to happen. Go. And he is one of them. And he also yeah. leaves a quitter right, time. Right down, I think last week he was perfect, four for four. Take time, Zach. Well, I think it's a great addition for Parker's squad. There's that urethane 10. Nobody likes a soft 10, Dave. 
And that's how you treat him. You just sweep him into the garbage can. I remember when I was competing and I went from 16 to 15 because the bowling balls got stronger. And um, when I started leaving more week 10s, I was like so frustrated that I said, you know what? Screw this. I'm going back to 16 pounds. Guess what happened? I, I still left week 10. Ah, uh, can't be. The Hall of Famer. Oh. No week 10 there. Paralyzed five pin instead. First strike for Dallas. Still has plenty of power. And a nice mixer there for Tommy Jones. Parker ball in the third. Seen that a few hundred thousand times, haven't we? Gee, I wonder why he's, he's bowling anchored. <laughs> it is the Earl Anthony pattern, after all. You need to have a good lefty out there. The Candyman, Sean Maldonado, in the anchor position. Interesting, no Bill O'Neill. Yeah, Bill sitting this game out. We'll see if he's going to participate in the other game. John, whoa, whoa, that never came back. Spared up, buddy. You want to strike? No count. Well, there's a couple different ways you can shoot this. This way, or you can just cross over and throw the head pin or cut the head pin into the 610, like that. Oh, no. Unlucky. Ah, what a shot, dude. So the Dallas Strikers have had a Sorry. problem winning it because their average is great. But the other teams are hot at the moment. It's the strikers who aren't striking and it's Waco at beef stew with the advantage. We are partway through game one here. The PBA Lee League and Allen Park. And we get set for the second half of this opening game in between two teams trying to hang on for the chance to make the trip to Portland. And they're bowling on the 43-foot Earl Anthony pattern today, Randy. Yeah, and just like Earl, Earl was great on tougher patterns and uh, this pattern stuff. And the only thing I can tell you right now is there's just not enough lines on this graphic. <laughs> uh, you can see Parker going pretty straight from the left side. Your thing is in play on the right side. Players are everywhere. So the Wonders, the 23 pin advantage at the halfway point in this race for two points. Right. Stu with an absolutely beautiful strike on his first shot. And in the Baker format, this is going to be all for Stu Williams in this game. Spun that marble beautifully. Pretty good shot there by Stu Williams. Let's go down on, to boys. the manager for Dallas, Norm down 33. What did you tell your team during the break? I told him to stay with it, you know. Those were sort of four out of five really good shots. Stay with it and uh, enforce the, the issue. And look, I'm, I'm all right. I, I'm not worried. Thank you, Norm. Well, we'll find out if they do indeed stay with it. It's a big shot here for frame number six. And another soft 10 for this Dallas team. That has been a pattern through six frames. Yeah, half the frames, flat tens for the Dallas Strikers. Maybe the name's going to be changed to the Dallas Sparers. Nice. I thought you were going to give me the names have been changed to protect the innocent, <laughs> but you topped that. And an opportunity now in the seventh frame for the Wonders to take a real stranglehold for this first game. Mitch Chupe, who also threw a, maybe the best looking shot of anybody so far. That one on the other hand, a lot of work to do. Yeah, big left off his hand. When your reverie it's that high and the lanes are this tough, you're not going to be able to miss by that many boards to the left. You can see about the 12th board that time. Remember his really nice shot was right over 10. But now he's left himself some work.
Gonna cover that back pin, the nine pin. Wow, that's not necessarily the conventional way, but he drilled the three right into the nine. There's no pictures on the scorecard. <laughs> And our great stats are brought to us by our dear friends at Lane Talk. For more information, head on over to lanetalk.com and download the free Lane Talk app. All right, big shot here for Frank Snodgrass. We see what he's done so far in Elite League. There you go. There's a 10 that got chopped in half. No week 10 on this shot as you take a look from profile of the form and style of Snodgrass. That's almost like the logo, isn't it? You see how he looks down at the foul line right as he lets go of it? Interesting the way he tracks his target. Splash down for Archer and suddenly more work for the Swaco side in the second half of this game. Together. Quickly in the Baker format, if you're not familiar with it, the leadoff bowler bowls the first and sixth frames, as Randy gives you the intel on how to make that. You bowl the second, you bowl the seventh, the third, the eighth, the fourth, the ninth, and the anchor man, huh. fifth and ten. <laughs> Numbers favor, he makes it, and he does. Can this guy find his magic? Few people in professional bowling can string strikes together like this guy when he gets going. It's scary. Looks more fit, doesn't he? Like yeah. he's lost some uh, some LBs. But good shot there. Good shot. Good shot right there. Well, and they had a chance to cut the lead, but not to be as Buttrif fails to strike, goes high, leaves the 6'10". Right the goal here, so if Waco hangs out of this lead, they'll be halfway in this race for two. It's two points, so if Waco wins both games, this match is over. But if they don't, if we split them, then we will go to a shootout. And the loser goes home. Yeah, the, your playoff chances are completely gone. You you get to watch the uh, you can watch the playoffs. Yeah, you can watch them from your house. Uh, you can pay your own way to Portland. Um, there's lots of ways to do it, but you're not going to participate. Still to come, oddly enough, the top two teams in the league, Vegas versus Portland. They don't have that problem. Oh, gorgeous shot. Right here. Yeah, he's been nails for this team. Just when it looked like maybe Waco was slipping a touch, Zach Wilkins with the evil mustache twirl. A throwback to Parker when he had his evil mustache. It's, he's twisting the, the, the handlebars there. Is Just that the, like a, a Raleigh Fingers thing? like or? a das dastardly thing from the old movies. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, good. My goodness. Almost got a backdoor messenger there. Still ahead in my lunch bet. Not sure what the lunch bet is. No. Pretty good shot, though, by Tommy Jones. Watch this pin action. Head pin came searching. Well, the irony here, Randy, as we talked about before the match. And, and Kimberly in the interviews, well, you guys are really rolling it well. You have the third highest average. They're not, they cannot get to 200 here. Yeah, and right now, Waco just needs seven pins in the 10th frame. Just for like, just for fun. To capture game one. I think this guy could probably handle it. Yeah. How about 10? He's thrown two absolute bombs so far. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> You know, you, when you're that old, you're not supposed to be that good. He's like a freak of nature. 
You know, the really bad news is for the guys in the summer, he'll be back for the PBA 50 tour. The good news is he takes some time off to spend with his family while his sons, who are magnificent bowlers, oh. uh, go out. Wow. And so he goes and he's a bowling dad, so he, he gives mercy to those on the 50 tour when he's not around. <laughs> because, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not going to matter. No. You want to shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> Take a volunteer from the audience to shoot that. Yeah, but his two sons, Justin and Brandon, man, are they good. Well, he might have been disappointed nice in that, but he's going to take the first point. Waco halfway to picking up an all-important third victory that will keep them alive for the chance to make the top six. Akron and Motown having clinched in the last few days. The handyman, boy, another soft 10, Randy, for this Dallas team. Well, our, uh, tenth frame, what is that, six of those? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only Sanze. thing they have to look Anybody forward to is they can get off this lane and go to the left lane for game two. Yeah, five ten pins. Yep. And no ringers in the bunch, everyone the same. There's, uh, yeah, some soft ones and then that messenger <laughs> by Jones. Touche. Touche, Billy. And the interesting question here, I wonder for Norm, and maybe Randy, you have a second to ask him if he's going to change his lineup. Yeah. Wow. Tough, tough on that right lane. Norm, you're moving yeah, over to the left lane for game two, a must win for your squad. Any lineup changes coming? Yeah, there's going to be a lineup change. Uh, I'm going to flop uh, Maldonado and uh, Frank Snodgrass. Um, it, not for any reason other than I just want to. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Norm. Hope it works. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Wait, was Norm just managing? Yes, he was, making the big decisions. He's going to need to make some big decisions because right now this Waco team looks smoothly in control. But you know what? we got another 10 frames to bowl for Dallas's season to stay alive. And our coverage of the PBA Lee League continues tomorrow on FS1 at noon Eastern time as we conclude round 12 of the Elite League presented by Snickers from Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan, New Jersey Kingpins at LAX, and the Akron Adam Splitters versus the hometown Motown Muscle. Kimberly standing by with TJ. Tommy, it's got to be frustrating for you guys. You've bowled really well all year, um, even today. And, you know, you've won this event four times, so you know what it takes, but you guys just cannot seem to put it together for strikes. You guys are on a new lane. What's the plan moving forward? You know, it's all communication when you bowl team bowling. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for me right now, I got Bill sitting over there taking the day off because he's, you know, whatever. But uh, we bowled together for about seven years. But... <laughs> The rest of us just got to get our get our minds together and, and go out there and make some good shots and get this thing to a roll off. Good luck to you guys. All right, Kimberly and Tom, thank you very much. Bill O'Neill is sitting this one out. Probably didn't love his old buddy <laughs> digging him there. Enjoy your but day a, a lineup change here <laughs> and a little flop between Sean Maldonado All and right, Jake, Frank Snodgrass. A lot of. Half tens for them on the right lane. Let's see if that changes them and see what their ball reactions look like moving over to the left lane. No changes, by the way, for Waco. And that's a good looking chop the ten and a half there for Peters. And again, a reminder that Dallas has to win like this point or they are completely out of the playoff picture. Well, this is more better. No week 10. Well, it was an interesting discussion we were eavesdropping on between Stu Williams and DJ Archer. Here's Stu now about Stu's opinion of this right lane. Which he doesn't like very much right now. Come on. They were talking about how Stu felt that the right lane was tighter down lane, and 
watching the Dallas strikers ah. leave those flat tens and then coming up light that it was a little tougher to get the ball up the hill on that right lane and and so it would only make sense that Stu's first shot was a little tuggy and there's that tightness down lane ah. so an opening break for Dallas right, sorry boys right. such a bad shot such right. a bad first shot and so now Sean Maldonado has had great success at the regional and national level. Well, just split that right in half. So far, so good on that left lane, right? It, so, looks, it looks way better. We seem to have a third character in our play, and that's the lanes. Yeah. Fourth arrow out to about eight. And then the good pin carry. And suddenly, although it's only the second frame, this is kind of an important shot here for Mitch. Gotta hurry. The impossible dream, the 2 8 10. Did I mention hey, tight down Mitch. lane on the right lane? I think you did. Hello. You're, you're absolutely right, two. Professor. I think I've made the 2 8 10 like twice in my life. It, does it not have a lower percentage than a 7 10 for conversions at this at the PBA level? I think it I, does. I think it's hard. Of course, I'm going to get a lot of grief for that, but I mean, there's there's a couple of ways you can try to wrap the two pin around the 10 and have it kind of pull the 10 over into the eight. That's one way or you can have something bounce out splitting the 2-8 straight back. It doesn't look here. It's hard. It yeah. look it's, I've tough. made the 7-10 more than I've made the 2-8-10. Butters swinging way wide. And the messenger comes through for the strikers. That's what I'm talking about, my man. And this is our just right strike brought to you by Just Bear, the mindful choice for high-quality protein with no antibiotics ever. Just right, just bear. And this just barely struck as the headpin came over with that little soft messenger onto the seven. I heard what you did there. Just trying to to take care of our sponsors. We love them. We do. Well, DJ Archer, listen to the Stu Williams lecture. So little softer ball speed. He's got the loft, and because of that, he's able to get that ball to come around I'm the corner on the right lane. Where was the string? Beautiful shot of the ball just ripping the back of that rack. And Dan, some DJ is going to run that one out. He's got some moves. Oh. Nope, not that time for Tommy. Oh, that one just squirted to the left. Spared up. I don't know where I didn't get that one projected. Oh, yeah, I was a little. I was a little. Yeah, not enough projection to the right. You heard him say it. But should cover the 610 with no problem. Ninety four point three percent of the time it's made every time. That was me. I just didn't According to Lane Talk. Our friends at Lane Talk are, are, are good friends at Lane Talk. Love Lane Talk. So this is the man who was picked up when Ryan Simonelli was let go. And unfortunately, Ryan is having a tough time this year. We hope he gets it together. And Ryan's so good in Portland, Maine. Yes, he is. I mean, he was the MVP yep. last season. He's had some huge shots in that building. But Parker had to make the tough decision. That needs to oh. Where did that come from? Oh. Yeah. That's a lot of hand and the right amount of ball speed. You can see his ball speed is 17.3, so it's soft enough to get it to come up and catches just enough for the 1-3. After back-to-back -back opens, now it's back-to-back -back strikes for Waco. So Frank Snodgrass struck at his second ball when he was in a different position, now in the anchor spot. Interesting decision by Norm Duke. Run the spare down, Austin. And that shot just never made the left turn. Shocking. My fault. I made the 
This average, not quite as easy as the one that Tommy Jones just polished off. Oh, well, then again, if you do it that way, it is easy. And for Frank Snodgrass, this is a very satisfying moment of the match. That's sponsored by Snickers because nothing satisfies like the Snickers. Well, he loses count, but he saves the open frame with a great cover here on the 1, 2, 4, 6, 10. Oh, and Parker that time through the nose. All right, check it out. Bad shot, said. You, you heard him say, just let it go. When you grab it with the thumb, typically it's going to be a miss inside of target. One of the advantages the two-handers have is they don't put their thumb in it. Harder to grab it that way. Come on. So after five in the first game, it was Waco that had a 23-pin lead. This time, they're down 28 in the race for two. If the strikers are able to hang on to this lead, we will go to a shootout with the winning team moving on, the losing team eliminated from playoff contention. In the middle of game number two, where Dallas is trying to hang on, Registration for the 2024 PBA LBC National Championship is open now to bowlers of all skill levels and from all centers. The PBA LBC National Championships heading to a new location outside Chicago and includes two new junior divisions. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at pba.com slash LBC tournament. Jake Peters trying to help Dallas build an even bigger lead. is over leaves him with just a single pin again inside a target not enough hold on this pattern on a house shot yeah not the Earl Anthony 43 96 percent of the time Let's go down to the floor and talk to player manager Parker Bone the third. Parker, the struggles look real on that right lane. What adjustments does your team have to make? Well, Stewie's going to make a big adjustment here right now. He's going to take a guess, move deeper on the lane, and try something. And obviously, we've got to get Mitch back on board, too. The other two guys are good, and I just have to make a better shot. That's as simple as it is. All right, thanks, Parker. Perfectly said. He's got something at Ooh. least he can handle. Ball change and a, a, a line change for Stu Williams. Big move to the left. We'll give that a chance. Yeah, I don't think he's too mad at himself. He's like, yeah. took a fair chance. I mean, he knew he had to do something different. I'll show you how good these bowlers are. That This is not an easy shot. And basically, 92% of the time, they take care of it. So you got to pay to I get to it. Yeah, that was so close. Three oh, nine for the lefties. Oh, like I hit a puddle and just went. Yeah. Sean Maldonado. Inside as well. This is makeable, but as right, Randy enough. will show you here, it's not going to be a lot of fun. Get it over to the right side of the three pin, cut it into the four and seven. That's left again. Lucky to get two. All right, Jake, hold us up here, brother. And is this going to be a big moment in this match? Frame number seven, all of a sudden you see that lead change rather dramatically. Now the Wonders very much in arm's length of Dallas. It was a 40 pin advantage for Dallas at one point, shaved it down to 13 with Hupe up. 
Whoa, snap hook. Come on, Mitch, run down. That right lane looks awful. It's what happens when you're afraid to throw it an inch to the right. I finished my career on tour feeling that way every week. <laughs> All right, no trouble there for Hupe. Will he be back for a shootout if there is one? Don't forget, if Dallas hangs on here, this is an enormous shot for Jacob Buttrick. The shootout will be on the same lanes, which seems to be an advantage for Dallas, and it's three frames aggregate, no spares. Aha, huge shot for Butters. Man, is he throwing it slow. I think his first shot of the match, Randy, was under 16 miles an hour. I think it was 15.6. Man, it's slow. Remember, Hupe's first shot was right, right at 20 miles an hour. By the way, to add one more thing, if we do have that playoff, Waco will choose to go. Who will go first? We'll get lane choice. And Archer, I don't know whether he was going to try to walk it out or he just didn't want to look right, DJ, at it. Come on. <laughs> It's like somebody took a can of STP and dumped it right in front of the three pin. Holy Andy Granatelli. That was pretty close. For the love of Mario Andretti. There you go. Look it up, young people. Let's look it up. No trouble there for DJ. So you're saying there's still a chance. Well, there certainly is for Dallas to try to put a hammerlock on this thing in the ninth. Tommy Jones knows a thing or two about foundation frames. His best result so far this season in the Illinois Classic. Possible dream rises up again. Well, he, he got it to the right spot down lane, but I That's think it was problem, fast. I like that one. Get two of them, right? Well, you just heard him say, yeah, a, well, I like that one. And yeah, his reaction indicates yeah, yeah. he did like it. Yeah, it, it may have been just a, a hair fast. Wow. Must have been a hair off the top of his head then, because it was that close to not being the 2 8 10. Hey now. <laughs> Get two. All right. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything here in game two. And right. what started out as a, something that looked very, very appetizing for the strikers spoiled quickly. Well, Zach Wilkins has looked pretty darn good. And he did flirt out to the right his last shot and mixed him up. Yeah. Let's see if he's got uh, the inkling to do that again. Messenger, yes, and it counts. Yeah. How about that messenger there? It looked like a penguin flooding on its belly coming across to take the 10 out. Look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. And no matter what, because of that strike, Waco cannot be shut out. Which means they can knock Dallas out of the playoff race. Stand up shot off. Nice After shot. three Let's frames, the strikers had a 42 pin lead. Come on, on the one. And now they're now they're in jeopardy of getting eliminated and having any chance of making the trip to Portland, Maine. Where Norm Duke has had some success in that building too. It's ironic. He told us a story. We were just chatting with him before the show about overcoming a huge lead in this building of over 40 points in an individual match. And it may be turning on him here years later. All of them. They lined up the tape. I would say go right up the middle because you're going to be throwing a big man. I want you to 
you to get lined up as much as you can. So go ahead and so good strike. count here will force the legend to get the first strike in the tenth. You heard Norm say, I want you to get it lined up as much as you can. Norm is still thinking that there's a chance, and there is still a chance, yeah. of course, of a roll off. Well, nine's okay. <laughs> I believe he needs strike in seven. Excuse me, strike in eight. Oh, look at that, warming up the old wing. First things first. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. We're going to a roll-off. There's a lot of traffic around that 10-pin, and it didn't go for Parker, and we will indeed have a roll-off. And remember, they're staying at the same lanes. Well, this is plenty good enough to strike. Look at that. There's a lot of action there. Wow. Each team will choose three players from their squad to throw three shots. Total pinfall from each shot if we have a tie after those three shots. We'll go to another sudden death shot from another player from each squad. Well, Parker, did he just audition for himself right there with a very pretty strike? I promise you he's in. <laughs> I promise you. All right. You know Waco will decide like which I'm, team I'm will go first. And by the way, we're not shooting spares in this. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's literally no, one ball no, per frame. No. We gotta find out. Do I have to tell you the three-man lineup or just the order? I'm gonna go first. Yep. All right, Parker wants to go, I'm first. go first. We don't have to tell him the three guys. Okay. okay. We don't have to tell him the three guys, and one of them is going to be Parker Bone the third, and that's completely understandable why he'd call his own number. I'm gonna go with Parker, Zach Wilkins. You're right. And then after that, I'm not sure. Maybe DJ. And for Norm, I gotta think Tommy Jones will be in the equation. Yeah. Oh, that was a, all right, that's nine. Good looking shot. All right, so who's, who's gonna go for Dallas? Butters. Butters. TJ and, gosh, I don't know. Well, Butters did throw a couple strikes in this game. Game number two. He's just slowing it in. Chops the seven. Advantage to the strikers. Again, loser of this, out. Zach Wilkins, yeah, I think that's yeah. a, 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 an easy choice, really. I got two of them right so far on that squad. All right, who's after Butters for Dallas? Tommy? I think so. Okay. That was a good move off the 10. I thought that was going to be 10 back. Let's think about this. This came down to that light mixer that Parker didn't strike on that left the 10 pin. It, it probably strikes nine times out of 10. It's Jake Peters in the number two position here. It's cumulative score. He got a lot of action there and he needed it. It's a one pin differential going into the last of the three frames. If we're tied, we go to one frame each. It is DJ Archer as predicted. Believe in you. And Norm Duke will see who he calls up. I'm gonna have to guess Tommy I, Jones. I would think. His pedigree yep. demands it. Oh, 
Don't go high. Oh my goodness. Five to win Hi. for the strikers. Hi, man. Again, there's that shot where you're afraid to throw it too far to the right, and that was just a full Yankee. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Because you'll always miss right where you're supposed to Oh, it's not going to be Tommy. It's going to be with Snodgrass. One, yep, and turn it into Frank Snodgrass. Norm's, Norm's telling him to aim Brooklyn. He's going to throw the plastic ball straight and hard. I told him that. He's four. Excuse me, five. We did exactly as told. And the Dallas Strikers come off the deck. They were a swing away from being eliminated. And instead, they win 27 23 in the shootout. They get to two first. Waco is knocked out of playoff contention. And Dallas wins with Bill O'Neill not even bowling. Who do you think I'm lined up? Nice job, Bill. And last year's champions are. Sometimes you're the dog, and other days you're the hybrid. Just saying. Hey, Norm, Norm, congrats on awesome. advancing. Norm Duke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you, Randy. Congrats on advancing. Take us through what you told uh, Mr. Snodgrass there in the 10th frame with the Brooklyn shot. Yeah, I got him right here. And, you know, I told him just like uh, Tommy did. We said, look, uh, spare ball down the middle. But every time I tried to hit head on or to the right in the pocket, it was bad for me. So I said, ain't Brooklyn, ain't Brooklyn. And he did it. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a yeah, good great advice and congrats. You guys are still in this and still, still hey, have still a chance to get to Portland, Maine. Exactly. Norm and Frank, thank you and congratulations. Now we have one more match and this time it's the two teams at the top of the standings. The Lumberjacks and Vegas. Mano a mano, eyeball to eyeball coming up next on PBA Elite League. And today on FS1, witness one of the great lineups in Major League Baseball, powered by three former MVPs, Otani, Betts, hey, I hear he can bowl, and Freeman leading the Dodgers as they take on Cody Bellinger and the Cubs beginning today at 3.30 Eastern on FS1. Otani going yard last couple of games, too, for the Dodgers. Speaking of people who know how to go yard, Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont, Kimberly Pressler with us. As a matter of fact, we're going to hear her pressing questions in a moment, but I got a pressing question for you. What just happened there? Yeah, it turned into hot garbage real quick, didn't it? And one shot ended up costing Waco um, from having any chance to defend their title. And it was that shot in the 10th by Parker Bowen the third, where he left that mixer, uh, mixer 10 pin. Yeah, that looked like to all the world it was going to be a strike for Parker. And if he yeah. gets it, we're talking about something completely different. Absolutely. But Waco is knocked out. Dallas still has a chance to make it to the playoffs in Portland. So we've, Kimberly Presser is kind of going around asking, you know, if you had a chance to have a PBA Elite League team, what would you name it? Here's today's edition of Pressing Questions. Brought to you by you. Tom, if you owned a PBA League team, what would you name it? Um, let's go with the Tampa Toms. Marshall, if you owned your own PBA League team, what would you name it? Mm, the Outdoorsman. I would name it the South Carolina Commandos. I'd flip a coin, and it would be the Lions, Tigers, or the Bears. Oh, my. Did you get my reference? The Yellow Brick Road? Kyle, you know a little bit about the PBA League. Yeah, Portland Lumberjacks. Now, say you were the owner of a PBA League team. What would you name it? I would have to go with the Storm Troopers, Kimberly. That is so good. Did you literally just pull that off the top of your head? Yeah, I did. So PBA League, you know, we may have an expansion team. The Stormtroopers, I'm taking applications. Hit me below. And that presented by Go Bowling. Just slide into Kyle's DMs if you have another idea for him. <laughs> so the new standings, we see Dallas moving up to 3-9. and nine. Waco now you put the E there for eliminated. And coming up in just a few moments, the top two teams, the two highest scoring teams, Las Vegas and Portland. But as we look at our Bowl TV highlights here, where they held round 11 of the PBA League at Thunder Bowl lanes. And Jesper Svensson comes through big time for the Akron Adams splitters. They knocked out Waco 2-0, and Akron is in the playoffs. And then it was EJ Tack at the Motown Muscle as they beat the New Jersey Kingpins with some help and clinched a playoff berth as well. The top two scoring teams, multiple time champion Portland Lumberjacks taking on the high scoring high rollers when we return.
Let's flash back to the 2022 PBA Elite League Elias Cup Final. The Lumberjacks now 2 0 come back and win their third straight PBA Elias Cup League title, defeating the Dallas Strikers 3 2. Kyle Troop, Chris Prather, Wes Malott, and the manager Tim Mack have been a part of all three Lumberjack titles of the Mark Roth MVP, not surprisingly, Kyle Troop. And here we go, the top two teams in the league fighting for a playoff bye, fighting for top seed. Portland in their recognizable Lumberjack outfits and the high rollers. Matt Ogle, Sean Rash, Matt Russo, A.J. Johnson, and Andrew Anderson, who has got a lot of folks here rooting him on. Andrew from this area. Matt Ogle. He started with his feet way left. All right, pick it up. Pick it up. When you're going to create that much angle on this pattern, you can't throw it hard. You got to keep your ball speed down so it'll come around the corner. We've seen this leave for the third time today, I think. And no. So a rough start there for Las Vegas. Leave it there. Leave it there. Two Baker games, you get four shots unless you're the anchor player. And it's, uh, it's tough because of the weight between each shot. That's a pretty strong lineup Tim Mack brings out here. Fa, Quintero, Prather, Smallwood, and Kyle. No West Malott. Nope. He is here. Been battling a bit of a back. And you see Thomas Larson in the background for Vegas. He is in the envelope and available all good, necessary. All good. Nothing was done to these lanes, by the way. In the short time, there was obviously no time to do anything. <laughs> But it was the right lane that emerged as a major player in that Dallas versus Waco match. Grandpa was spectacular for these guys in Portland last season. Well, it seems like if you're going to have Matt Ogle in a double in a team competition, you got to have Sean Rash. They've bowled together quite a bit. Yep. Won the uh, Roth Holman doubles. Oh, oh, nice. Are you kidding? Back-to-back -back <laughs> open frames for them to start. It's probably worth mentioning that Sean on his Facebook page, I think it was this morning, posted a video that says, this is kind of summing up how things are going for me right now. Throws a pocket 410. Back-to-back -back opens. Oh, he, start. he went to blast that tension if he could yeah, off the back wall, but didn't happen. Later. Come on. Arturo Quintero, who loved Portland, Maine so much, he moved there. Yeah, what a story. for both sides finding the pocket. Fit it in there, fit it in there. So Spare this ball. oil pattern's rough. Fit it in there, come on. Work hard here. Work hard here. 183 to 179, 220, 180, our first two games in our last matchup. They're, they're hard. They're Earl Anthony hard. Worked out for him pretty well. Look out. Yeah, there's a chop. And so an early mistake. So yeah, right at the point at the moment, I should say, we uh, see a couple of teams struggling just a bit. Matt Russo looking for another title down the road. He says he'll get one out of Baldwin, Missouri. But he's a Jersey guy in a lot of ways. Very close with Parker Bone the third. That's where 10 belong. Much better now for the high rollers. This one's perfect by Matt. The 
Shark. I like that he one. deserved I like better. I like it. Run it over. A lot of your thing going down the lane right now. Run going down one. these lanes right now, I should say. And um, Let's go. Get it going here. one of the prettiest, one of the best games on tour. This man right here, Chris Prather. But it's been it's been a struggle for Chris here in 2024. Anything you can point to? No, I mean his game looks perfect every time I watch him throw it. Good work, perfect. Good pitch. It's a cruel game. Good work out there. AJ Johnson. New dad. New dad. New dad. Con yep. Congrats, AJ. Yeah, very happy for him. Again, I, I feel uh, like I'm selling up these splits. This is makeable, but it's going to be difficult, obviously, for AJ. See that ball speed right there? Mm -hmm. And so that obviously that's yeah, soft enough, the and then it overhooks. So what happens if he throws it faster? Uh, then it'll hold its line, right? So he, he sta if he stands in the same spot, looks at the same target, and throws it just a mile an hour faster, it's probably 10 in the pit. So the struggles continue oh. for Las Vegas. The good news, the only thing that's keeping him in the game with that early going is that Portland struggling too a little bit. The unsinkable Tom Smallwood stepping up. And another guy from this area. Used to work the factories in this town. Before he hit a big on tour. Well, that was not a rerun. I mean, this be is shooter. just yeah, ugly. Be a here, Smalls. Try to make it small. here, Smalls. Every player on the Lumberjacks through four players is using urethane because the lanes are hard. And that's what the players do. They they try to to blend the pattern out and they try to use something that's not that reactive so that they can play a little bit straighter and keep the ball more on line to stay out of trouble. All it's doing is creating more havoc. Watch this. No. So what's the adjustment? We can't continue to, to see this like this. So is it an equipment adjustment? Is it That's a foot adjustment? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? I, I just don't think they get enough shots to really figure it out. They're going to talk to their teammates after every shot thrown. They're going to make an adjustment when we go to break after five frames. And the adjustment is, hey, I know they're hard. Let's somehow try to find a way to hit the 1-3. And if I don't strike, let's leave something that I can make. And Andrew Anderson collapses the 7 and 10. And the hometown bowler with a huge group of people here to support him, upwards of around 50 here in Allen Park. Now that lead just 11 with. Maybe the hottest player on tour stepping up, and he Let's too go, is using time. urethane. All five of the lumberjacks, okay. urethane on the one right lane. And uh, no, that messenger's going to drop good, harmlessly good away. Now that messenger's kind of hugging like the four, but did nothing. Hey, I remembered it. I remember my spare ball in Detroit. Yeah, he doesn't use it that often. Still up. So through five, the top two teams in the PBA Elite League going at it with a small advantage so far for Portland's Lumberjacks. Three times they have won the Elias Cup. Las Vegas and Matt Russo and hometown man Andrew Anderson in pursuit. And the PBA is proud to have Boulders to Veterans Link as the official charity of the PBA Tour.
1942 through the support of the bowling community. BBL has raised more than $56 million for veterans. To donate, go to BBL.org. Yeah, big shout out to Johnny Petraglia and John Laspina. Very, very much involved in that tremendous yeah. charity. Helping to bring that great organization and the PBA together. Tap on the 10 for a strike for the high rollers. All right, let's go down to the floor with Tim Mack. And Tim, what do you tell your team, or what did you tell your team during the break? Listen, I, you just got to make some baby moves. The lane is really difficult. Both sides of the lane are difficult, and both lanes are difficult. We're going to make some baby moves with the urethane, try to keep it in play, catch a double, see if we can't take this game. All right, Tim, thanks. So let's see what qualifies as a baby move. <laughs> Well, if that was one, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was um, no tears there. That's perfect. Way to go. No need for a diaper or changing table on that last shot for Graham Faw. Now Ratch looking to make it three in a row for the high rollers. And he does get a mixer. And Las Vegas getting serious. Sam Leto Monticelli, the manager for Las Vegas. Just like that, the lead goes right over to Las Vegas High Rollers. Now Portland trailing by nine, can Ringade in the lead with a strike here. Oh boy. Let it go. Oh, it does. That came back. That was somewhat similar to Zach Wilkins in the prior game as far as the daringness to challenge that go all the way out to the right like that. That's how you throw it right there. I wasn't sure this was going to hook, and it did. So there's some friction in that spot. The urethane balls have enough surface on them to read that part of the lane on that right lane. Puts 10 aside. Well, things have picked up. Make another good one here. Stay hot, kid. Stay hot. This is back and forth now. Prather looking to regain the lead by one. Top two teams in the PBA Elite League going at it right here in the race to two. This is game number one. Pitch, Chris. Run that over. I like that one. Yeah, I like that one as yeah, well, really Tim good. Mack. That really was a good, good. shot. Good, good pass. Yeah, get this one here. Raiders' first title, by the way, in Allen Park. Won the PBA Scorpion Championship in 2019. See that Dodger really Cub promo? You talked good. about it earlier with That's the lineup good. of the That's Dodgers. Yeah. And then you said taking on Cody Bellinger and the Cubs. Cody Bellinger, an ex-Dodger. That's right. They've done well in the player development department and person acquisition. And how do I know this? Well, because I spent many, many days at Chavez Ravine. You are an ally man. This Las Vegas team couldn't hit before, and now they can't miss. That's five in a row. Oh, that one's for you, Bradley! See those eyes get really big when the ball's about 10 or 15 <laughs> feet in front of him after he lets go of it? That's when a player knows. Um, this one might be good. Yeah. Now Smallwood to have any chance here in game one. That looks good. No, no, sir. No. no. Another flat right 10. We have had right a lot over. of those today in both of our matches. And this is just game one of this race for two. Good job, Polly. 
A lot of bowling left still, guys. A lot of bowling left. A lot of bowling. Good shots. Good shots. Vegas just has if, to mark we were think to about take the first ball. point. And Andrew Anderson is more than capable of delivering that. And whoa, whoa. It's doable, though. It's doable. Yeah, but if the 10 standing, then it's a uh, it's whole different ball game. Oh, no, but you have no trouble with the 2-8. Past major champion is Andrew, 2018's USBC Masters in Syracuse. Out of Holly, Michigan, Holly Lanes. He marks this, and it's going to be victory, along with a couple of other pins, which we know he'll get. No trouble at all. That last pair I want to shoot at right now. <laughs> I think he's got two pins in him. Yeah. Is that not slow enough? The first one? That was good? Was it not slow enough? I feel what you could do here. If you took all four of the managers, I would pay for that step ladder. All of them Hall of Famers. Yeah. Parker, Norm, Amleto, and Tim. There you go. And one more. <laughs> Just for fun. That's one, you try. That's one point for the high rollers. As they look to take the top spot in the PBA Elite League table. Race to two. Las Vegas is halfway there. But you know what? Waco was halfway there and it didn't pan out for them. Can the comeback be made by the three-time champion Lumberjacks? Game two next. PBA Elite League uh, brought to you by Snickers. Game number two about to happen between the High Rollers and the Lumberjacks. With the High Rollers up 1-0. Tomorrow on Fox, it's week two of the United Football League. As the Houston Roughnecks take on the D.C. Defenders, spring just got stronger. The hard-hitting action continues tomorrow at 4 Eastern on Fox. Lane changes? Yes. Lineup changes? No. Yeah, the, the orange, yeah. orange and blue one, right? Same five. Right. So we'll see what the lane change will do to these guys. The right lane was definitely tougher in our first match when Dallas defeated Waco. Oh my goodness, what a start. Uh, the, the fast eight with the eight pin for Graham Fa. What's that? No. I'm still shocked at, the, at this lead. This is not one you see very often. Just try to cut the six pin over into the eight. It's doable. Close, close. Open frame in close. game number two we'll get, in this we'll race we'll to two. One nothing Las Vegas. Top two teams in the league, two highest scoring teams in the league. And the top two teams after completion of the qualifying, they get buys in Portland, Maine. And Vegas has already beaten Portland once. Yep. That just looked like it came off a little funny, didn't it? Yeah, almost like it fell out of his hand. Yeah. But a lot easier leave than that 6 8 10 was. We saw how much straighter the Lumberjacks played that right lane, all with urethane. First shot for Matt Ogle. He's trying to carve the whole lane. Well, there was some talk from Tim Mack during the break about our, oh, about our urethane may wreck their lane, and I wonder if that's going to happen. That's a shocker. The Lumberjacks should actually have a lead. El Nino is what they're chanting for Arturo Quintero. Yeah, not good if your weather pattern 
great if you're a professional bowler from Portland, Maine. Good shot. Wow. And again, look at the ball speed right here. Spare balls over there. Really good. Really good. So yeah, higher rev good. rate, you got to throw a pinch faster. That lower rev rate, right about that that 17 mile an hour mark, uh, is going to work nicely on that left leg. It's been a mystery at times for these bowlers. Conditions on the 43 foot Earl Anthony pattern have been tricky. Good job. Really tough. And I tell you, it may come down to who's more accurate or who gets a bad break. Well, I think we're going to, we might see what we saw in our opening matchup where the Lumberjacks have a little bit of advantage because they're finishing on that left lane. So if it does go to a roll off, they're on the better of the two lanes. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Dallas ended up coming off the deck and using the right lane, able to win in a shootout. Jeez, what is that? Oh my God. I mean, the 369 is bad enough. You throw a seven pin in there? Yeah. I can make it. How do I shoot it? Bizarro. Yeah, listen, he just, this is Sean Rash asking how he has to shoot something. <laughs> what do you think here? You got to cover that back pin, the nine pin. Cut the three into the seven. It's the only way you can make this unless you bounce something right, out and get lucky. Shot here, huh? Problem is, he's going to try to loop it a bit. If he gets too far to the right, he could miss all of them. Wow. I don't know if you can do much better than that other than make it. That was an incredible shot by Sean. Uh, that's insane. That was an incredible attempt, and this is incre incredibly unlucky. Look at that. One goes in front, one goes behind. Exactly. I don't know what else he could have done. Yeah. And that was right here, Allen Park. BJ Moore. Kick saving a beauty on the 10. Pay attention to that number right there. Good job. All urethane on the right lane for the Lumberjacks, mm -hmm. all reactive resin on the left lane for the Lumberjacks. for Russo and a big shot there for the high rollers. Hey, never give up. Great shot, great shot, great start. Right light for that team through three frames is the lefty Russo. That's the shot Parker Bowman the third didn't get. Right. The break. Exactly. That tilted Cost things, him. yeah, tilted things toward Dallas. Another good one. Really good. Really good, buddy. Run it over. Really good. Man, that was good. Tim Mack's reaction was, come on, man. As if to say, he deserved that strike. Here you see Tim right there. Whoa. The old epic spare. Lane. Really thin. <laughs> it almost looks like it shouldn't count. Oh, it got, it got a piece of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the wind, what I we, think. What have we not seen? What have we not seen I, thus far? Let's get a 5 7 10 next. <laughs> My goodness. Look at that hang spot right I there. I not want to slow down. That no. does not want to slow down. No, it does not. And that's why the Lumberjacks all threw urethane on that right lane. Over there. How do you fight that? Wow. If you're in Las Vegas. You, you have to move there, right and go straighter. Up speed. Okay. Because it's not coming off of that spot. You cannot open that lane up. And whether you do that with urethane or you take your hand out of it and you go straighter with reactive, whatever, you can't give the pocket away on the right lane. Too direct and an open frame against the high rollers. 
And this is basically a one in five chance for AJ to make that. I thought that was gonna. I thought that was gonna slow down. Well, Kyle Troop won a couple of events this year. Picked up another major. That U.S. Open was a big one for him. Very emotional after that victory with his dad, the great Cuppy Troop in attendance. Okay. I have expected the 10 to hit the 6 into the 3. Right? The way things have gone today. Yeah, absolutely. Three six nine ten standing. Now it's just the three six. Don't chop it. All right. That's good work. That's good work. We get you. Right. We get you. I like that. That was twenty seven seven. I like that. twenty two for Andrew Anderson. I mean, try to cut into. Sorry, Derek. The lumber decks just need to fill frames because I'm not sure that Las Vegas can string strikes on the right lane. I'm not sure anyone can. This is where they got hot in the last game right about now, but that was on the left lane. Look at that, man. Nope, not there, and it just looks like it skids. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. So can Amleto Monticelli who's in the foreground right there on the left trying to figure something out for his guys count on that Hall of Fame brain of his to figure out a new angle of attack for this high roller team or we're going to go to a shootout and Las Vegas will be competing in the shootout on the tougher of the two lanes. What will Amleto come up with? We're going to find out when we come back for the second half of game number two. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. With Kimberly Pressler and Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont, and our FS1 crew bringing you the second of our doubleheader on the PBA Elite League presented by Snickers here at the Strobel Arena in Allen Park, Michigan. Graham Fa, the lefty, Portland. Needing to win this game, force a shootout. That's yeah. how you do it. All right, Dave, let's get down to the floor and talk to manager, Hall of Famer Amleto Monticelli. Amleto, what does your team have to do in the second half of game two? You had three opens through five frames. What changes now? Well, they're going to have to strike, right? Uh, yeah, but how are they going to do that? Well, they're going to move a little more right because there's a little hang spot on the right lane because of the urethane being used. So it looks like a couple of balls would make it. Thank you, Amleto. Yeah, that was a good shot there. Yeah. That's a good start. Much better. Well, he's absolutely right. It was. Matt Ogle was not able to get that 10 pin knocked aside. Just a reminder, if you are joining us a little bit late, the shootout is three frames cumulative. No spare shot, just one ball per frame. And if that remains tied, then we just go until we find a winner. Frame by frame. Great frame, Matt. Great frame. Yeah. Great frame. That's a good shot. Really good. Co-star of the show, the featured player that we nominated for best or worst supporting actor is the right lane. <laughs> see Wes Malott there in the back. He has not seen action today. He's still troubled a little bit by a bulky back. Tedo, perfect. He's really good at that slow hook, too, by the way. Way to go. Way to go out there. Now the lead is 33. It's a no doubter. <laughs> oh, you gotta love watching him. He's so much fun. What's gonna happen now to Sean Rat? That's gonna go light. I thought he was gonna get a 17 for a second. That was a pretty big move on oh, his first shot. Well, the obvious conversation with Amleto is they all know they have to do something different. It was a matter of what that different was going to be. That was pretty good. And then the other question is, at what point do you kind of bag it 
Say, all right, let's just get lined up for the roll off. Now. You know, I, I think that one more frame, you got to start talking frame, strategy frame, about, frame, all right, this frame, is what we frame, did. Frame, this is the move we made after the first half. All right, this is what we're going to do going into the roll off. And then here are three players that are going to do it. Stay hot here, kids. Stay hot. Come on, baby. Big turn, big hit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. One of the best at slow hooking it right there, Chris Prather. Start thinking about the roll off. Yeah, start thinking about the roll off, exactly, Tim yeah. Mack. Las Vegas will have the choice as to who will go first. for them on that right lane has been Matt Russo. Well, you have to think that we do go to that roll-off, which is apparently much more likely that he will be part of it. Yeah, he, you're going to have to put him in that. It's be interesting where Tim goes. It seems like Prather has earned a spot. Prather, Arturo. Kyle, how do you leave out Kyle True? Let's see his next frame. And Smallwood doesn't look bad either. No. All these players on the Lumberjacks are, are really good go. at slow hooking it. And that's exactly what the left lane's calling for. Right lane has just been taunting. Can I please have a re rack? AJ very politely asking for a re rack. Yeah. And you hear pins being knocked down while no one on your screen is bowling. The man knocking us down is Wes Malott. For the Lumberjacks. Very interesting. And it, we will go to so a shootout. So good. Oh, yeah. There's nothing that the high rollers can do about this game. So and let Monticelli will decide if he wants his team to go first or if he wants Portland to go first. And then Amleto will trot out his three choices. Amleto being a big soccer fan, this is essentially penalty kicks. You see the rules, three players to roll one shot each. Higher three shot total wins. If we're still tied, each team rolls an additional shot until we have a winner. And a little tip for Kyle, a little tap. Andrew Anderson's gonna go ahead and step up and just keep this train moving. Uh, you give old Wes a, a shot here. See if he's got, if he's got anything. It sure looks like that's going to happen. He is. Yeah, no, nope, Kyle. I thought they might bring Wes in. He can sub, and that just knocks Kyle out for the game, but it wouldn't knock him out for the shootout. And Wes is looking like a man who's about to go bowling. And Troop in the shootout. And maybe you're getting Wes ready for if we go past the third frame. Correct. Yeah, that could be. What yeah. about for Amleto? Um, I'm, I'm got. Hey, I was trying to strike. I've got so Russo because he was perfect in the two games. Uh, Andrew Anderson and AJ Johnson. All right, we'll see what the decisions are for Tim Mack and for. Amleto Monticelli. First place at stake in the PBA Elite League standings. 
Tyler Troop just murdering pins right now. Highest game of the day right there. What do you guys like on the roll off? What do we like on the roll off? Yeah, and you two are definitely in for sure. And, and, and I want to go with Smalls. Go with Smalls, and you're the first one out, and then you. Okay? So we'll go, we'll go uh, KP first, Smalls. You. Yeah. yeah. Going with Smallwood. Okay, over, it looks like over, possibly over Kyle? Is no, it, is, no? Over, over Arturo. Over Arturo, okay. I'm okay with that. We'll go for it. Okay. okay, we got our lineup. Do you need to know? Okay. Good luck, guys. Yeah, you too. Good luck, all the best. Yeah, well, this was an easy choice yeah. for Emlano Monticelli. Russo's been tremendous today. He wants a little love. No spares will be shot. One ball. No, sir. Nine. Prather has looked very good, particularly with the demands of this left lane. What it's called for, he fits him perfectly. Let's go. The only thing they have to be careful of is if the left lane transitions in front of them because of that slow sweeper, he could break loose, go right through the nose for five. Instead, it hung yeah. a little bit because it was wide right. Too far right when he yep. threw it. All right, that's all six. So AJ Johnson has a chance to really hurt him here with a, with a strike. His last shot was really nice on this right lane, left that ring in ten. Nine here, nine in the third. It's over, no matter what the lumberjacks do. Good point. Instead, it's seven. Now a strike would tie things. And it's Tom Smallwood. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Take us home. Come on. Come on, Smalley. One time, babe. One time. We'll strike here. We're even. And it becomes a one-frame match. And certainly we have to expect Kyle Troop for Portland. That's going to go in front, so it's a one-pin difference. A strike wins it for Vegas. That's the one I was talking about. Okay. Be before Prather's 2-4-8-10, that was the one I was concerned with. Very fortunate to get nine on that hit. So Andrew Anderson, 50 fans here to watch him. Out of Holly Hill nearby. The Michigan man with a chance to give Las Vegas the W. A strike will do it. Nine, and the best Portland can do is force a fourth frame. Got it! That's all! Vegas wins it! For the second time this season, Las Vegas' high rollers have beaten the Portland Lumberjacks, and they take over first place in the PBA Elite League standings. Thrilling finish, Anderson coming up huge at the end. Just aces this one, what a br brilliant shot by double A, shreds the rack, and that's all she wrote. You gotta like it when the players are throwing each other out of the way to get, <laughs> yeah. to, get to that winning shot, huh? <laughs> that was pure cash for Andrew Anderson. Our coverage of the World Series of Bowling continues tomorrow with noon Eastern on FS1 as we conclude round 12 of the PBA Elite League presented by Snickers here from Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Coming up next, MLB and FS1 with the Dodgers face the Cubs. For Randy and Kimberly and our crew, I'm Dave Lamont. You've been watching the PBA on FS1.